It's time! I'm an Olympian. I swam for Singapore in the Olympics in 92. So I've been competing in swimming for a long time already. So from all levels, you know, sea, Southeast Asian Games, Sea Games, Asian Games, um, Commonwealth Games, World Championships. So I've been to the top competing as an athlete. So um, that gives me a huge advantage, you know, coming in as an MMA fighter because now I don't have to. All I need to do is learn the skills now. And the conditioning, of course, that still has needs needs to be done, but um, I already have that background. It's it's the package is already made. All you have to do is do the embellishment, which is learn the skills and get the experience to fight, and that's it. You don't have to build it from base, you know. Mm-hmm. So that really helps. Yeah. I finished. I I was a swimmer, and then I finished school, became a doctor, and then stopped because I wanted to have the freedom. Uh-huh originally to surf okay mma all this was never in the in the in the it was never in the picture then what happened i, I pushed her to <laughs> and he was like this and then when hoyler came hoyler gracie came he was like <laughs> you should try mma <laughs> and i was like what so for me stamina conditioning it's a huge plus like i mean if you guys look at the video my first round second round it's like yeah i'm there but i'm not tired i'm not laboring you know i'm like I'm okay, so that's huge. And honestly, even if I didn't train for the fight, conditioning for the fight, I would have been mm-hmm. fine. So awesome. now it's just um, now my coaches are, are just putting their heads together to get me to learn my skills. And when the mm-hmm. skills are put together, when I have my skills and they become more automatic and reflexive, I'm gonna detonate everyone. When we were swimming, we also had to do circuits, like I had to do that, but it's a different level of intensity. The thing is with swimming, you don't get hurt training. Uh. In mixed martial arts, in martial arts, sometimes, you know, injury comes into play and all of that. So these things have to be modulated. You don't have to modulate that in swimming. It's you train, you're in the water, you train, there's zero risk of injury, zero. So, and then you're out. You're either doing circuits or you're in in the weight room. So it's it's that it's it's pretty zero impact safe. But with martial arts, sometimes you know injuries happen. You have to alternate your training. You have to change. You have to modify a lot of things and keep training. You don't stop because of the injury. So it's 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 different. It's it's not more difficult. And also, MMA is a thinking game also. Yeah, you know, when you train, you also have to think about what you're training for, your strategies. So it's it's not, yeah, it's not the same. Basically, how long have you been training MMA? <laughs> that's a that's a tricky question because MMA is everything. It's mixed martial arts. It's everything. Yes, it's everything. Um, but specifically for competitive for MMA. For competitive MMA, mm. to tell you the truth. Mm-hmm. One mm. month? No, not one year. Not competition, but. One month. The MMA training that we do, I mean, mm-hmm. there's a lot of stuff that's standard. You do your cardio, your yep. your battle ropes, your your weights. But I don't lift weights. I don't even lift weights. Okay. You know? I don't lift weights. Just very light weights, and um, a lot of cardio. I I do a lot of capoeira. But when I, you know, when the whole jujitsu thing started, I was just like, I don't really want to do that. You know, I mean, like hugging stinky people and like. <laughs> <laughs> rolling with guys and like having these guys all nah and then I'm also really picky about my instructors really picky because I coming I was a professional athlete before. Nah, I, understand. I know what a good instructor is I know what it entails I've been so fortunate to have been in trained even in swimming by amazing amazing coaches you know so I have my standards so when it came to martial arts I was like with this guy and then Hoyler came along I met him and I was just like yeah this is this is the real thing then it's okay yeah my my regular rolling partner in Bali until he left like he went back to uh, to Europe he's somebody. crazy Lauren Lauren right. <laughs> so much heavy the guy have and uh, smash me every day strong. these are the type of people I roll with man so, <laughs> so 
How how do the guys treat they they treat you as one of the guys or no, they, when I'm they, rolling they're they like they go full on, full ah. full on, on they, they if they make camera. a mistake they know I Wait, I they're uh, Russian uh, <laughs> Russian French guy mm-hmm. and an Australian mm-hmm. they don't care if you are laid or not no they, they, they go, go full on no yeah. my <laughs> first first yeah. anything never compete in Muay Thai in Capoeira in nothing it's uh, pretty impressive huh yeah <laughs> I mean like just stepping up on the stage and going for it. I mean, I've had the whole world zooming in on me, you know, you're talking world stage, Olympics, and I'm, uh-huh. I'm competing, even in SEA Games in Singapore when I was competing, mm-hmm. it's like the whole nation is watching you. This is like... My, my goal in there wasn't to represent Muay Thai, mm-hmm. it wasn't to, you know, it's mm-hmm. MMA, but it was... My goal in there was to survive mm-hmm. and make a submission. You still have that conversation I had with you yesterday morning before my fight? Yes! I told you what I was going to win. By. Yes, yeah. she told me she's going to win by submission. Yeah. We put in the YouTube before, like, uh-huh. I put in the Facebook uh-huh. before her fight. Like, in she's, the I have room. one video for, for Hoyland, uh-huh. and I put there, and she said, Master, I'm going to win this fight by submission. Like, it's... Uh, yeah, I, I can use that screenshot and, and it's yeah. and it's uh, dedicated and it's, to you. And he it's has the there, video. It's I'm there. in the change room. Have, yeah, in the change house, room. And, yeah. and we joke in the change room and say, "Oh, so you say something for Master Holy Grace, say something for your sponsors and this and that." And she's told that. You can quote that the All message right. that I sent you. You right. still have it saved because I think I said uh, I prefer submissions because yes. they're classier way to finish. But uh, my mom came after a lot of persuasion uh-huh. because she was like, I can't watch someone hit you. Uh, okay. <laughs> and I was like, well, you know. <laughs> it's, like, it's like watching a horror movie. You just close your eyes and you open your eyes and close your eyes. And then the last part when a submission happens, and uh. you open your eyes. I'm glad you're okay. She checked my face. She's like, you got a little bump here. I'm like, that's okay, mom. Don't worry about it. <laughs> and that's it. She was, she was ecstatic. I think she was just... Glad that I was safe. Uh, <laughs> do you have kids? Planning to have kids? No, I don't have kids yet. Good. She's a professional yes. fighter, and she came back to it even after having children. Instead of using that as an you know, excuse, excuse yeah, like, oh, I'm gonna hang out my gloves. So it's great representation for women. I think we're in a day, we're in an age where women need to step up a lot more um, to showcase what we are capable of. Uh, MMA is not just a men's sport, it's a women's sport too, you know? And there are a lot of things, I'm not just using MMA as a platform, like mm-hmm. in surf, in everything, in mm-hmm. life, in yep. whatever you want to do as a female. <coughs> um, don't bow to society's pressures and what they think is right, and what they then. think should be done at this age, mm-hmm. or at that age, or at this point of your life, you should be doing this. Mm-hmm. Who cares? You do what you need to do. You, you do what you want to do. One, yes. What you want to do when the time, you know, has come to do it. Mm-hmm. Don't bow to society's pressures because then you lose yourself. Because, yeah, you see, girls are like that. You know, they're not tough enough. <laughs> it's bullshit. Girls are tough. You know? So, what? that's what I'm trying to represent also. You mm-hmm. know, that I'm way past the prime age to freaking fight MMA. I mean, you can be smart, you can be beautiful, you yeah. can still be athletic, yep. and guess what? I'm 37, but... So? My point is, don't put limitations on yourself. That's true. Or don't let society put limitations on you, you know? And I think I represent it really well. Mm-hmm. And um, hopefully with that, you know, the girls that look up to me, and I already have a lot of that, especially in my gym, you know? I mean... It's, it's important you see a role model and you see it happening day to day. So mm-hmm. you lead by leadership. People see it. It's not just a talk. Mandarin, Mandarin. I speak uh, Hokkien, Cantonese, Portuguese, Bahasa Indonesian, uh, Czech, and I read and write Latin. Oh. Wow. You know the commentator, mm-hmm. Frank Barker, he said yes, oh, yesterday, the day before at the rehearsals, ah, that's a massive cage. I was like, yeah, it is pretty big. Mm-hmm. He's like, it's great for running. I'm, he looks at me and I'm like, I don't plan on running, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I knew you'd say that. He's like, I was hoping you'd say that. I'm like, I don't plan on running. Yeah.